Welcome to Toffee TV, it is the match reaction, Aston Villa 3, Everton 2, a huge dose of deja vu again tonight for Everton, they're 2-0 up and have blown that lead and beaten uh, down at Villa Park and another defeat, fourth straight defeat to start the Premier League season, it's now five Premier League defeats on the spin for Sean Dyche's men, uh, stretching back to the Arsenal game last season. Um, yeah, I don't know really what to say. What can you say? I'm not even surprised. In all fairness, um, first time since the since 1958 they've lost their opening of four games. They've first time since the early 50s. I think they've conceded this many goals in the opening of four games for a for a a manager that's built on defence. That's not good reading for him um, and for players. They have. What can you say? The players have got to be more resolute than that. Uh, there was no Seamus Coleman. He missed out Ashley Young coming as I thought he would in at right back. And Jai was in midfield uh, on the left hand side rather. Dwight McNeil was in his, the position that I think is the only position he can probably play at Everton to get in the side just off the strike. And he, he did okay. Well, in fact, no, he did. He played well today, to be fair. He dropped off a bit in the second half, but he did play well. Today and Dominic Calvert-Lewin was through the middle. Uh, Everton had Oral Mangala on the bench the first time he was being he's been involved in um, first team action. And Villa started the game really brightly. In fact, he could have he could have been two up early on. Some good play, particularly from Luca Dean getting on the back and cutting the ball back to Ollie Watkins, which he he put wide. It'd be the first of quite a few he put wide as well as uh, getting on the score sheet. And the warrants were there for Everton. They got in a couple of times. Michael Keane didn't seem to realise that people were running off him at times. Um, he struggled to cope with that movement. But Everton, despite Villa dominating, which they did, uh, Everton got themselves in front. Amadou Onana, dawdling on the ball. Great pressure from Dwight McNeil. Took it off him. We've seen Onana do that thing many times for us. It's good to play and I really like on Anyone who watches the channel knows that I, I think he's a good player. He does that thing where he, he gives the ball away and then pretends he's injured. Uh, McNeil took it on. Don made a good run across him and, and McNeil's fired it into the corner. I think he's caught Martinez by surprise in all honesty. He hits it early and it goes into the corner. Brilliant start for Everton. Good for Dwight. Gives him, you know, that should give him the confidence uh, to be getting them shots away more regularly. And um, and it was a great start for Everton wearing their new third kit. Uh, Villa come back strongly, as you would expect. Everton defending, lots of players behind the ball. Dom was isolated at times, but I thought he had a really good game tonight, although I'll talk about him missing a absolute sitter in a bit. Uh, but Everton eventually breaking out in Villa at one stage, I think it was 87% possession, um, which is atrocious really when you're considering it's a game of football between two teams. How can a team have 87% of the ball? But that is just what we were trying to do today. Yeah, we broke out of, out of uh, our defensive lines and got ourselves a free kick. Um, Dwight McNeil is a tremendous free kick, curling in. Towards the goal, Dominic Calvert Lewin planted the header past Martinez to give Everton a 2 0 lead. I don't know why VAR took so long. It was obvious on the second look at a replay, just from the right angle, uh, that Dominic Calvert Lewin was clearly on side. The goal was given correctly and it was 2 0. And Everton, I mean, if you're a Villa, if you were a Villa fan or a Unai Emery at that stage, you would have been scratching your head as to how Everton were winning 2 0. But from an Everton perspective, Brilliant, defending deep and just clearing the ball. And obviously it took our chances when we got them. And uh, I was wondering if it was going to be one of those days where that I'd be moan. Everton don't really have where the opposition sort of batter us and we nick and away when we, we very rarely do that. I've seen it today with Forrest winning at Anfield. You know, Liverpool have dominated and had way more of more chances than, than Forrest and Forrest get a late winner and stuff like relatively late winner. We don't seem to ever do stuff like that. I was wondering if today was the day because after it went 2 0, Villa still had all the ball, don't get me wrong, but there was a there was an element of the players 
you know, sticking together, keeping it nice and tight for about five to ten minutes. And then we go to sleep. And the most obvious threat, nobody thinks to uh, to get out and stop the cross. We'd already lost Michalenko. He'd gone off with an injury. Ashley Young had gone on at left-back and he'd pushed James Garner on as a sub. He went up to right-back. Um, there's too much gap. Dean gets in round the back. Stands across from Michael Keane. Has got to do better. It's poor defending from Michael Keane. And Ollie Watkins heads it in. And I'm, I'm wondering if Jordan Pickford could have done more as well. But it's definitely on the on Michael Keane, this one. It's not even like a whipped, you know, a whipped cross. And he can't really get near it. It's a stood-up cross, which he should deal with. And he doesn't. Watkins heads it in. It's 2-1. And the momentum shift started then. And Villa put us under pressure. You know, Rodgers got in. Keane let him run off him. And if his touch had been better, he'd have probably made it 2-2. And we had, you know, we had that. Think of having to ride it out till half time. We got in at half time, knew it was going to be a tough second half. They made the change at half time, O'Nana went off. And they just they brought Ross Barkley on, and Ross just got on the ball. Him and Tielemans just dominating the ball in the middle of the park. And Everton didn't really get close enough to them. They had a couple of great opportunities. Jordan Pickford made a brilliant save um, from Rogers, I think it was, and then a great block. The other side by James Garner as it come out. Brilliant block um, to keep Everton, you know, at 2-1. Two, two, we then had a great opportunity to make it 3-1. It was a lovely, it was the best bit of football we played all day. Lovely little move. Got Dominic Calvert-Lewin in. He's running in on goal. He's got Njai running, coming in, joining in the pitcher to his left. He's in with Martinez and he should just strike it. And he hesitates and hesitates and tries to check back inside and doesn't realise Conter's got back and Conter just sticks a toe out and deflects it wide. And I don't know if, if he was on side. The linesman didn't put his flag up. If he'd have just smashed it in, that's what you're doing. If the referee, you know, if it goes to VAR and he's off, he's off, but he didn't. He hesitated and the chance went. And it, not long after that, Ollie Watkins makes it 2 2. A long ball. Harrison sticks a leg out at it, panicking because they're coming in now and about. It deflects it. Michael Keane had one job to do in that instance, which is Mark Ollie Watkins. He lets him run off him. Harrison sticks a leg out, deflects it into the path of Watkins. It's 2-2. Two -two. And you did fear the worst. It was all Villa after that. It really was. But Everton did have a moment where it was a brilliant play. Another good little move ball right down the line. Um fired across by Dwight McNeil and Dominic Calvalu and inches away from getting on the end of it. Villa brought John Duran on and he was a real threat straight away. They'd missed chances. Watkins missed two sitters to put them 3-2 up. They brought Duran on. He's lively. He got the ball, you know, 30 yards out. No one went and closed him down and he's unleashed a tremendous strike into the top corner. It was a brilliant goal. It was a brilliant goal, but we were just, we allowed Villa to get on the ball so much. We couldn't get out and get anyone near him to get a block in or to, you know, to, to cut his angles off or whatever. And he stuck it. It was a tremendous goal. Don't get me wrong, but you can't be giving players that much time. And we just give the ball up so much. And it was, there was pockets where we played some football. Why don't we do that more in commentary? Whether you like him or not, Jamie Carragher, he's a, he's a really good pundit when he's not doing Liverpool. Um, and he was saying, Everton have got to get on the ball. You cannot allow a team to just have the ball. And there's no, there's not a huge, don't get me wrong, Villa are miles better than Everton, but there's not a gulf where there's, we just can't have the ball. They're just far too good. That's nonsense. It's utter nonsense. And people who pedal that, you're talking nonsense. Not about that. It's about being brave. Everton played a few times, nice little pockets. The one where we got Dominic Calvert Lewin in. At three two, lovely little um pocket of play, got Dom in, struck the defender off, should well he hits it, he hits it well. It hits the underside of the bar and comes out. Could have gone in. We could have had that little rubber the green on that occasion. We didn't, it bounced out. He had a brilliant game, Dom he did. The the one or two one, he should have put it in the net and then if it's offside, it's offside and that one he's close to. But considering we do isolate him so much in the way we play, he had a really good game, I thought. Villa could have, they could have, listen, they could have scored more goals. Um, they could have run away with it, really, but the chances they missed. But we could have, you know, could have ended up like 
I don't know, six or seven, four or something, really. Um, but we've lost it, and it's another defeat. And I, I don't know, I don't know what else to say. I mean, you, with the second team in the Premier League history to to blow a two goal lead in two games on the run and lose them. Um, there's a lot of records out there. It's five wins still since the middle of December. It's none of these are good. None of these are good records for Everton, and the pressure cranks up again. It's getting more and more. Um, what do you say? What can you, I mean, I've said enough, haven't I? We've lost the game. <clears throat> what can you do? Bottom of the league. What can you do? Uh, man of the match. Um, oh, Dwight McNeil. Did I'm gonna give it to Dwight McNeil? I think Dominic Calvert Lewin had a really good game, and I was thinking about giving it to him, but I think McNeil. I thought because I thought defensively we were we weren't great. Midfield, mm, you know. Now I think Dwight. I think he scored a goal, uh, and he set the other one up. You know, and not albeit a free kick, but he, he's created the other one. So Dwight McNeil is my man of the match. Hey, uh, yeah. What else can you say? That's it from me. See you later.